This is an orangutan in Zoo Sicily and a siamang and a tapir and together they are in our arboreal gardens. If you wonder how they got there, well today we are going to look at how this has been done and how this has become one of my coolest builds in a while. So we are starting with the general layout, we will also look later into the general building, the fence and barrier design, the towers, how I actually did the climbing towers, then we look into some uh, habitat detailing and the finishing touches to make it a realistic build. Now with the music change, uh, welcome to today's voiceover. We are starting with a little bit of the layout and as you can tell from what you see on screen, um, I opted for a, a garden style that has different elements like different circles that come together to one coherent build later on and the you know connecting factor is going to be the climbing frames you'll see that in the next part obviously but we're starting with the layout of the housing now my thought behind that was I wanted to have like a little raised area from where the people can look into the indoor section and the indoor section is also like a um, dual layer section so the idea is that I make the visible part a little bit raised so that this is where the people look in and also we can see the zoo but the lower part, which usually would be the realism uh, stables and stuff, you know, will be only implied. So we kind of save a little bit of work over here, but it still is part of the overall thinking process. So everything is raised. So in our imagination, the, um, the cages and stuff will actually be on the lower level and they will have some windows to the backside because it is on a cliff. You could also get some really good daylight in there anyways. But um, that has been one of my main thoughts behind this. You can see now a little bit further into the build. Um, I cut out a lot of thinking, a lot of processing because I changed a couple of things a million times. I tried to incorporate as many new pieces as possible, but I also wanted to make them uh, kind of logically used and not just for the sake of being there. So uh, I ended up trying out a lot of things and the only thing I really loved was the brand new um, lower area stuff while Alexa in the background is doing some stuff here. I hope you don't really <laughs> notice that too much. But um, yeah, so it's it's really very interesting to understand how this building has been built and how this building in general is, um, you know, um, is vibe vibe wise it's actually Sicily but then again it has a lot of influences from the newer packs as well but it yeah it's it was really hard to opt for this specific style um, we are using as you can see stuff from the Twilight set we're using uh, stuff from uh, the brand new Oceania pack but we're also using a lot of the in-game pieces uh, that have been here from the very beginning uh, a lot of standard pieces to make it somewhat realistic uh, but yeah it turned out to be very nicely looking um, it is one of of the more modern builds of Zoo Sicily, I would say, but it remains um, very much fitting into the style of Zoo Sicily itself, and I'm quite proud of the finished result. You'll see that in the real-time part. Uh, I think it really integrates super well into the overall style of Sicily without being awfully copy-paste from the other buildings, so it has its unique style um, while being uh, very good or very well integrated into the style of Zoo Sicily as I just said a couple seconds ago So I'm yeah, I'm very proud. Uh, I, I also left some things open uh, over here and they won't be closed because we are talking about animals that are pretty smelly So um, we have these openings here and uh, in fact Sicily is not going to be that super cold and once it's super cold They can still go into their implied inside stables now I'm going to put down a couple of rocks over here, but again, we have to imagine them being the um, the virtual barrier to what is realistically the lower area. If you now do peek in the background, there is a brand new kind of rope frame in the center. You'll see it in detail in our real-time part. Unfortunately, I lost the recording, but I can tell you, my God, that was quite the hell to build. I made a very cool like rope canopy of the new rope pieces from um, from brand new Oceania pack, but it was a hell to make it look good and to fit in. Like I opted for a circular approach at the end to make it rather simple, but it still looks good. So you'll see that throughout the uh, time lapse a couple more times, but um, yeah. Now, as promised, we are speaking about the barriers right now, and I, I went for, as I said, a bit more of a modern approach of a lowered down habitat that is separated by these kind of concrete walls. Uh, you, you would see that very often in modern zoos, that they work uh, with these kind of modern 
concrete walls. Um, for once, it's relatively easy to build these because you just kind of uh, make the frame and then they pour in uh, the concrete and everything is set in place and then you can use that as a foundation to put on your fences but it also helps obviously to keep the animals um, relatively nicely separated from the people at the same time as giving them some privacy because always like lowering or raising the platform is having good effects on, for example, the noise reduction, uh, noise level of people and stuff like that. So uh, that always helps. And I, as you've seen, I've also put down some uh, glass panels in front of it to further reduce the noise that would get into the habitat and also to keep people away from jumping down. Because necessarily it's not like super steep and super deep. I didn't want to make this like inaccessible in a way. I wanted to keep it very much close to it, but yeah. Um, as I've done all the fencing, uh, I went in and also uh, connected some of the viewing galleries with some unique styles, as you can see over here, using one of the fountains um, the other way around. And then I started putting down some bamboo to the back of the habitat just to make sure it's kind of visually separated. Um, and as promised, we also have another circular little uh, habitat element on the other side of the pathway. This is going to be the um, location to where all the animals will climb and go over to, simply because we need to have like a destination that makes the whole garden like kind of a, a garden in order to make them go somewhere. Because if you only have these arboreal platforms, they not really necessarily go on top of that because they have not really a ded dedicated location to go to. So they don't really have a destination to go to um, and this is why I opted for this second layer habitat on the other side of the plaza. The problem though was that uh, keepers cannot access this one as always and then you can't really put anything in that a keeper is required for um, and also our tapirs wouldn't make it over there simply because they cannot climb but I think this is this is one sacrifice that we can make because the uh, siamangs and also our friends the orangutans will go over. Also before I forget to mention that I know that siamangs monks and orangutans usually do not go together. Like, I did not really understand how it was all done in, uh, you know, in the um, in the Zoopedia. For whatever reasons, uh, whatever reason, it just didn't work. Oh no, actually, Sia monks do go together with orangutans, but the tapirs do not. But at the end of the day, I'll, I'm like, you know what, they, they will get along. They'll get along. Anyways, we are looking at the towers, and I might say, as much as I love the design, it's broken. It doesn't work. Um, it did work, and then there was an update or whatever happened, and it's not working anymore. I will reach out to Frontier and send them the map over. I have no freaking idea how to fix it. Um, the moment I finished the work on these towers, I broke the brachiation and I broke also this platform in general. Like... It just doesn't work. For whatever reason, for the Sia monks, it perfectly works. For the orangutans, nothing I tried works. I, I couldn't get it back to work. They can't use the platforms. They are just climbing over them, but nothing else like that. You'll see that eventually in the real-time part. And I spent now two and a half hours trying to fix it, and I literally just gave up. Um, visually, they are stunning. I love the design. It, it went through a lot of iterations that you won't see. Um, you see already one of the final designs, and... Um, yeah, I gotta admit, this has been inspired by a video I saw online a couple of days earlier when there was like orangutan uh, yeeting a possum down of uh, like one of these, I think it was Singapore or something like that, or was it or Korea? I don't, I'm not sure where the zoo was, I just saw that video on social media. I was a little bit shocked, but I heard the possum is actually alive, I think, but... Um, that was wild, and I saw that, and I was like, yeah, it's not the most funny video, but it was very inspirational because of that tower in the middle um, where the orangutan actually went up. The, I, I was wondering why the possum was up there in the first place, but that's definitely something not to talk about right now. But yeah, I ended up uh, with this wonderful design, and then I made a connection with these wonderful climbing pieces. And fun fact, at the beginning, as I said, they, they, they did brachiation over here. I did do a lot of tests before I went on, and I kept building and building and I did not touch, I did not touch these things and all of a sudden it was broken. For whatever reason, I don't know. But uh, yeah, as I said, you, you better keep with me till the end of the video where we look at this uh, for the real time part. But oh boy, does this look good. Also, if you're wondering why there are so many cuts in here, the material would have lasted for over 40 minutes of time lapse if I would have sped it up nine times. Now you can calculate yourself how much valuable content I have, and I'm not even speaking of the recordings that I would throw away anyways. That was a long, long build. I spent the entire week and more building solely on this build, so I really hope it's paying off, but... Um, 
yeah, uh, it, it really needed a lot of detailing as well to sell the idea. Sometimes you really notice that all the details make the difference. And specifically in this build, uh, you can see that putting in effort to make also the garden in between look very clean and finished. And I mean, clean is not the right word. I think finished and um, done is the better word. And also you always go for a certain level of a level of uh overgrowing i guess in, in a way or like um weather effect or age i don't know and maybe age is the right word if it's relatively no new there wouldn't be that much grunge and that much details but if it's already quite a little bit older you would put a lot more plants in the plants would have grown further into their you know real size and stuff like that so these are things to consider once you build this and i remember that i thought this could be like a newer one but it's not technically new you know it's not a new build it already has been here for like two or three years and therefore there is already a little bit of weathered effects on most of the things stuff has aged and there's a bit more foliage grown around but it's not like super big you know it's not like super overgrown uh, you've got the usual stuff like bracken and stuff and you know obviously the trees and so on I imagine would have already been here so that is the conservation I did um, but yeah as you can see there was this wonderful platform that l kind of dips into the whole habitat so you have a way better view like with all the circles this ended up being like a little um almost like a land tongue if you want to if you know what i mean like almost like a tongue that goes into the habitat in order to give you like a super super nice view of the animals roaming around because from there you can also see the tapirs you can see the sea monks and you can also see uh obviously our best friends the orangutans actually the orangutan is the kind of hero of this episode um i could have opted also for a habitat solely with them but i figured it turned out to be a little bit too big for only having the orangutans in um, fun fact though, it's almost gigantic if you look at it, but from the traversable area, it's just about enough for the orangutans. It's, I was like, I was shocked when I looked at that. I was like, okay, that, that seriously needs to be three or four times the size. Nope. Because of all the restraints and all the stuff where they couldn't climb, and this is a perfect segue into this part of the video, I needed to make this mountain a lot more accessible for animals, so I uh, opted for a bit more detailing that equally at the same time wasn't even detailing, it was also helping them to get up there, uh, improving the traversable area, and then we went back into the um, already previously mentioned area below this circular pathway or terrace, I could, say, uh, could call it, um, in order to make this realistically their stables and their backstage area. As you can see, I'll, I'll fix a couple of issues here, putting some doors in, making sure everything has like a... Um, has like a proper uh, ground concrete pouring, so to say, where, where uh, everything would be built off on or on top of, you know, that's the wording. And then putting some gates in, putting some uh, other kind of, uh, yeah, what's that, like a garage door? I don't know, it's like a gate uh, where they would technically go in. And then we've got, oh, obviously we've got three of them because we've got the orangutans that would have one that might be this to the right-hand side. And then we've got something for the sea monks and the tapirs on the left-hand side. So everyone is separated in their own dedicated uh, winter area, if you want. And then I figured, you know what, last but not least, we do need like a little climbing frame in the center of this canopy over here where the people can get up close and potentially even they have like a winter canopy that can be put over it. So maybe pretend this from rain so they can go outside, get some fresh air without being pouring wet and stuff like that. So this is the idea. I did not put this on top because I wanted to keep it relatively light and open. Um, but you can imagine that they just have that huge kind of uh, canopy um, or foil or whatever they have to put on top of that uh, kind of yeah tent whatever that is um and i ended up going for like a an idea with some um beautifully designed as i as i find them really beautiful uh, hammocks as you will see in a second now we finally have the chance to use these small rope pieces in order to make like a really cool looking hammock uh, and i opted also for like a triangular look um as Actually, I, I do think this uh, really looks fantastic um, and they work. They do have or they do create a traversable area for the animals. So at least the lower one, you'll see I have two of them, but the lower one actually acts like one. You can also see the strategy I use to build these is like always using uh, one side, then push them in, lower them slightly down and then also make sure that um, everything kind of aligns perfectly so that at the end of the day, um, the 
each step you go to the center gets one piece less from the sides and so you can also merge them uh, nicely together and you still maintain this kind of little incline towards uh, the upper edges of this uh, triangular uh, shape and there you can see it looks really cool really smooth and then I added some of these just to ensure that uh, this would be hanging realistically um, on these uh, you know locks or whatever. Well, that's already been it with the time lapse. I really hope you guys enjoyed this so far. Also, a bit more structure today in order to follow the steps that took me uh, that I took to build this. And uh, I would hand you over now to the real time, Rudy. Be excited! It's looking shockingly good. I really love it. So uh, yeah, enjoy your time with the real time, Rudy. So here we are in the real time part and this is potentially one of those real time parts I am looking forward to the most. Today we are visiting the Arboreal Garden in Zoo Sicily and it is as I've said already in the voiceover one of my favorite things I've built in a very very long time. I know people are a little bit annoyed by these kind of uh, uh, superlatives and stuff like that but you know I, as I've already explained it's not really a superlative per se it's more like that I just felt this is this is it, you know, this is good. This is something I wanted to do for such a long time. And yeah, it's such a pain. I wish that we would see see this one brachiating right now, but oh, it's just a it's a, just such a pain that they seem not to do it. I'll actually send this file over to Frontier so they can look into it. Um, no matter what I tried, no matter what I did, uh, at a certain point rebooting the game, they would not brachiate anymore. It is such a freaking pain. I just got this one shot uh, for the introduction of the video, but that has been it, uh, which is so, ah, it's so sad. I mean, they brought this new thing in and honestly, they should do it everywhere now, but uh, they are not. And this is like really, really frustrating to be honest, because I built this with such, an, so, with such a pleasure, with such a vibe, you know? Um, and then, I mean, just imagine them doing it over here. That would be that would be so cool. I mean, it still looks absolutely gorgeous, you know, zooming up on there and, and having all this uh, area over here, as you can tell. Let's let's first of all go here to the right-hand side and uh, show you around from here. So this is one of the first viewing spots you can get to. You've got one of these towers in the middle, and then you can go up this little area here. Um, very neat. And as you look down, you can see there are someone, some of these ones uh, chilling down here. We've got an orangutan chilling there, some sea monks moving around. Look at that. There's a big one coming. Um, and there's another one. By the way, uh, it's not the final result of, of the specimens in here. I'll actually get rid of them. I just had a couple more in in order to make sure that they do some brachiation. What? They just don't do. Uh, but yeah, so you have a wonderful view of the gardens over here and you can see them roaming around here on the ground. Very neat. And if you are lucky, you can even see them maybe in here or have a little peek if they're in their little swing. Um, so really cool. You've got a little viewing opportunity. And uh, as you go here, I won't go there. This is a little bit uh, in, in the background. But yeah, we got to just continue our way over here running around the corner. You've got another very cool viewing spot because you really go into the habitat. Like it's really feeling like almost being inside of it. There you can see one of the big ones. Maybe they do brachiate over here. Sometimes they did now for me, but they didn't do uh, on the big on the big climbing frames. And in general, they didn't do that uh, that often. Like in the beta version I had, they just did it everywhere and every time. And now they just don't. Uh, it's such a pity. I really hope they fix it because uh, I would really love this habitat to be a bit more active when it comes to brachiation. Look, there you go. I just need to complain. I just need to complain. That's the spirit. That's the spirit. But yeah, you can really tell. Oh my God, they just trans. Oh my Lord, they really do this. Oh, I love that. Look at this. This was so smooth. That was the smoothest ever. Okay, now they listened to me and finally did this. But yeah, there's still no explanation to why they don't do this up here. It would be very hilarious if they do it now up here, but they don't. Um, but yeah, also the sea monks wouldn't do it too often. So I don't know. You know, we've seen it now. We can rest in peace now. This is all I wanted to see. Oh, that was so cool, wasn't it? Oh, really, really good. Um, that, that shows just how cool that is. Uh, but now, as we've seen, look at the group. We're taking some photos. Ah, 
gorgeous. It just turned out to be looking so cool. And then you can continue your tour through the garden uh, to a very special element we did in stream. They can see a little ruin, zissifying it, zissilifying it a little bit. Is that a, even a word? Um, but yeah, as we go over here, you can see there's someone standing over here. So you wonder why. This is basically a hidden queue. And the idea about this is if you want to have a look into this gorgeous area, you just have to pass by this person and he's making sure that you don't throw anything down here or whatever. It's like a little security guard in order to ensure that people do not abuse this viewing opportunity over here. This is going to make it nice in the future, but uh, yeah, the idea was that this is just someone um, acting as like a little security person to make sure people do not... Uh, misuse this area but yeah as we go around the corner you can get an, oh look I, I just i don't really know from which angle i should make like a photo or like a thumbnail because all the vistas over here are just way 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 too good they're like all fantastic also it's so cool to see them but now imagine them doing the brachiation over here i don't get it I don't get it. Also, it's not about the pieces. I used some shorter pieces over here, but I also tried this with long pieces and they just wouldn't do it. It's really, I don't, I don't get it. It's, you know, I don't want to complain the whole time. I did already do this way too often now. It still looks gorgeous and works the, the way it should. Because as we turn, uh, as we go further into the build, you can see there's another viewing opportunity over here um, where you can see them hopefully sometimes uh, doing a little thing here with this uh, tool. With a little thing trying to get some stuff and uh, you still from I, I ensure that from every point we are watching this habitat you can see the arboreal platforms uh, in order to really get this this vibe you know from this garden with like the in the air I think it's really cool and it worked out beautifully um, so ob obviously there's the backstage area don't really look at that but as we as we go higher up we are going into another cool little area so to the left hand side you have the inside of the habitat which is very bare bone but this is how it is uh, the focus is on the outside um, and they do also have their stables down here in the ground i'm going to show you in a second uh, that is actually pretty neat um oh there's like a f wait a sec we're gonna fix this real quick um whoops i'm not sure why this was floating but uh here you go we just fixed it live there you go. Someone's being boxed for whatever reason. So um, in here, you also have another cool area. There are some hammocks from there for them to chill down. They can actually use the lower one. The upper one, for whatever reason, doesn't work. But I think the design is pretty sick uh, with like the rope pieces. I think that's looking really cool. And this is basically the area where they can also spend their time if the weather maybe isn't that good. In my imagination, we can also have like a little canopy on top of it that makes sure that they are not... Uh, hit by the rain maybe or something like that uh, but yeah as you look uh, here there have we have some stable entrances and stuff I imagine this goes down into the basement where they have all the stuff um, and then once you go around obviously there is another entrance which goes all the way into the basement we even have some staff uh, entrance to the right hand side and everything is hidden below this construction over here to give this whole thing a bit more size a bit more oh my god this one's also floating uh, let me just quickly do this um, and there's also like this little can I I don't want no no no. Can I just yeah there you go, and come down come down please, boom fix it okay noise um so we've done that and now this is obviously the final viewing opportunity you have once you go all the around oh my god look at that there's at least someone hanging that is so cool like all the way in the background ah oh, love it love it that's looking so cool a little bit of Michael Jackson vibes going on here too um but that looks freaking cool that looks freaking cool too. Yeah, maybe I get this fixed somehow with uh, the animals not doing the brachiation, but uh, that's all I can do for now. Uh, I really hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. I certainly will zoom out now because uh, obviously this is what we need to see. Let's go into the free look mode and boom, there you go. This is the overview of the arboreal gardens and man... Am I proud of what I and we have achieved? I mean, you guys in Threem have also given me some good ideas here. But uh, this, this is really absolute fantastic. And I really like um, how this all is inspired by this one video where the uh, animal has been eating the possum down. I still do hope that the possum is alive. Oh, look at that one! What is this? Pleasing us to the end of the episode with some weird wonky but existing variation. Look at that! Yay! Okay, at least the rope is working and it seems not to be anything about the height. So maybe they are just like purely 
against me when it comes to do brachiation over here. <laughs> but yeah, what shall I say? Um, with or without brachiation, this is really, really, really beautiful. Also how the people can see the whole thing. We have some problems with boxing and stuff. I'm not going to mention that because, uh, well, this is just a game. Um, but yeah, look at, look at the whole thing. Look at the whole gardens. I really love them. I think they have a very, very cool place um, on the map in, in general. Uh, I'm going to put like a restaurant over here and then I'm going to finish this all off. And then we have a bit of space in between. We have a bit of space in between here. But we are really going towards the end. Like as I said, we will enlarge the parking lot to this entire space over here. And this everything will be nature. Uh, so yeah, I'm really, really happy with how this turned out. I think I said this 10 times now, but uh, it really is the truth. And I really wish you guys uh, loved today's episode as much as I did. Uh, really would appreciate if you guys um, have something to say about this build. Let me know in the comments down below. Either appreciate it or, uh, you know, also talk about criticism if you have any. And also, uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, you would help me out tremendously by hitting that subscribe button and making that little algorithm understand that you do like what you have just witnessed. Um, so, certainly I wish you guys a wonderful weekend. I can't wait for the next episode. Have a wonderful time and goodbye.